everyone. All right, let's see, we got 17 people, cool. Cool, cool, I think we got it, we're good. All right, so real quick, guys, um, I want to show you guys what, what was uh, updated on the student portal, and hopefully I'll be able to complete a little bit more. Um, so this is before, before we start, okay? So student portal. You're going to see there already um, chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. These are already uh, uploaded. There's a class replay. There's uh, the chapter pages uh, separate, so it's not the whole book, it's just that particular chapter. Um, key terms and review quizzes I'm adding here so you guys can um, contest yourselves with each chapter aside from the Quizlet. PowerPoints is not enabled yet. I'm updating the, the currently updating the PowerPoints as well, so, so it goes there for review. And uh, the Zoom links, these are all being changed, these are all being um, updated, okay? so. This was just to let you know that a few videos are, have already been added. Uh, chapter 1, 2, and 3. Hopefully, today we'll have uh, up to today's uh, chapter. So everything should be uh, there by, uh, by the end of the day. All right. Another thing I want to show you guys. This is going to be updated also. Right now, there's a link here for you to schedule fingerprinting. And there's a link for you to... Um, what do you call it? For, for you to uh, schedule your state exam. These two are being updated. I already have a video for this. Uh, there's a new way to, um, to take the exam, which is online. You can take the final exam online. Uh, the video is going to show you how to schedule uh, for it. You can choose to do at the test center or you can do um, online from the comfort of your home. Okay. So these two videos are going to be updated according to all the changes that have been happening. On top of me trying to change the site and update it to you guys, for you guys. Nationwide, they decided to make changes too. So make my life even easier. All right. So the videos that are here, um, you can still use uh, the same, but it's going to give you a link for you to go somewhere else uh, to register. So I'm going to update uh, these videos. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. And the same goes for uh, fingerprinting. So fingerprinting, you no longer need. Uh, this form to be printed out. You don't need to print it out anymore. So you just schedule your fingerprints. I'm also going to update uh, this video uh, addressing that. Okay. So I know some of the stuff was already kind of mentioned. I just wanted to put it out there again. Mainly the, the reviews. Yeah, the chapters are also, uh, when you go to, um, to YouTube, if you're looking at it, I already started updating a few of them and I created playlists. So when you, when you go there, you have uh, the playlist, which is for Essentials of New Jersey Real Estate, which was the previous uh, book. And then you have a playlist for, for this um, real estate salesperson book. I'm, I'm adjusting that as well. So it's easier to find even on uh, YouTube. <clears throat> if there's anybody watching on YouTube, let me know you're there so I can address you as well. And if you have questions, you're welcome to join us. Okay. So I did ask you guys to write any questions you might have before we start. So I can address it, right? So... Muslima here has a question, which is, can you give an example of novation? All right, so novation means nova, nova means new. So when we're talking about novation instead of assignment, all right, I think you guys remember assignment, right? When we're talking about subleasing, we're talking about assignments. Assignment is where we transfer the, the rights and duties to somebody else, 
right? So like a wholesaling. Novation is the same thing minus the liability. So what are we saying in terms of novation is if I, I'm the buyer and I cannot purchase, I can transfer the property to you, Muslim, or the right to purchase to you, right? And if it's an assignment, then my name is still linked to that contract. Therefore, if you default, I have, I'm responsible for paying as well, okay? In a novation, we make an agreement, me, you, and the seller, we make an agreement, hey, Mr. Seller, I'm no longer buying, Muslim is the one buying. And there's a brand new contract between the two of you, I'm out. So novation means new contract or completely new terms and the previous terms no longer matter. Okay. Good. She gets the answer and runs away. I feel offended. Verona, I'm waiting on your message. I see you right there. Wouldn't it be better to do this instead of an assignment? That is a great question. Well, unfortunately, most people do not know about novation. So when people do wholesaling, there's two ways to do wholesaling. When you're buying a house and flipping the contract, right? Uh, as we commonly know as wholesaling. Most people are trained on assignments, but they forget one document that says you release liability when there's the assignment occurs. It's a, um, a document or a clause that you can enter into the agreement where the seller agrees that if you do assign, if you do transfer to somebody else, you are no longer liable. So um, not every wholesale, <laughs> let's put it like this. There's a lot of courses out there and all these courses, well, not all of them, but the majority of courses, these are people that find stuff online, copy, paste, and boom, you have a new website and we have a new training program and I'm the biggest fish on the block, even though nobody heard about me. Yep. So... <laughs> That's what happens. A lot of these uh, wholesaling uh, contracts and programs that they offer for you to learn real estate, they just copy and paste. So there's very few uh, courses out there that actually offer the document that will allow you to assign and potentially novate. So very few uh, programs out there to do that. But anyway, this is not an assignment class. Uh, this is not a wholesaling class. This is not an evasion class, but uh, it is good that you know the basics because there's a lot of people that are stuck with these. I think I mentioned the other day. They are stuck with assignments. Any other questions? Before we start. Sorry. All right. Questions. The day only has twenty four hours. People ask me to do impossible things. I went to bed at, um, so you guys know, I went to bed at, at 4 o'clock, almost 5 o'clock in the morning, got up at 7, and people are still asking, hey, where's this document? I'm like, ah, oh, listen, got up at 7, it still did not, <laughs> still did not finish getting there. Anyway. All right, so, hey, Ryan, what's going on, man? Thank you for joining us on YouTube. To sound like the radio station host. Hey guys, thank you for joining us, right? <laughs> We're gonna have a wonderful show. 
sit back and relax, enjoy. All right, so let's go. And New York, I did see you had company there before. I was here, I saw they were waving at the camera. Tell them I waved back. <laughs> Do I have almost everybody here? I think so. Uh, Miguel, as soon as you have a, uh, as soon as you have a chance, try to settle down because this is going to be very important, guys. Very, very important that you guys pay attention to agency. I just went over some results of uh, a student, not my student, but he found me on YouTube. Uh, he just shared his results uh, of the state exam with me. Okay. Uh, and when I went over it, it's exactly the same thing that happens most of the times, which is agency is the relationship between um, is a relationship between the buyer um, and and the agent or between the seller and the agent, whoever. Uh, hired them okay so it's very very important you guys understand the concept of the practice of real estate this involves contracts so listings offers to purchase um, and and leases right but these three integrate with agency there's national agency which is our general rules as you guys know and then there's a state uh, requirements but very 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 important because this is where people fail the most is where we're going to talk about ethics. It's where we're going to talk about disclosure, about what you should be doing for your client or not, right? Where you need to stop, where you need to go. Um, what, if you're careless, if you're negligent, right? If you're doing the right thing, how can you be liable for these things? All right. So here we're going to talk about liabilities. Make sure you guys do pay attention and no distractions. Very, very important. All right, so let's start with the agency relationship. Uh, the first thing I want to do actually is your agency. I want you to write the word agency. I want you to write and remember it's employer, employee relationship. Okay, employer employee relationship. So somebody employs your services. Like for instance, I'm the seller. I'm going to hire uh, Stephanie M. I'm going to hire you to help me sell my house. The moment I hired you for those six month listing, for instance, I'm your employer, right? But who did I employ? I employed your brokerage and you're an agent of the brokerage. Therefore, you are my employee as well. For the, the for this purpose okay so in the next six months through the next six months um all right okay so during the next six months you, you you're you're mine in the sense that you work for me trying to sell my property okay so there's a few duties that you have to abide by and and requests that i can make legally and lawfully and others that i can't and you have to be aware of these things like for instance, I cannot tell you, hey, there's mold in the basement. Please don't tell anyone, right? Can I do that? Of course not. Your duty as my agent, you're the listing agent, so you represent the seller. Your duty is to advise me, hey, Bruno, here's the thing. In certain states, including the state of New Jersey, which is where we are right now, in certain states, you could get sued for up to six years. Remember we talked about this, right? You could get sued up to six years. So anything you don't disclose now and then later on they find out, right it's going to be on you and on me not not just me that i'm the licensee you the seller as well because you knew it all right so it's better for us to come up and tell everyone that there's mold or mr seller fix the mold and then we list it you guys understand so it's your job to advise me on these things and if i insist on not fixing it right let's say i just paint i talked about the the, the paint called kills well stephanie you have to tell Erica, the agent for New York, the buyer, you have to tell Erica, hey, Erica, listen, the house is great. There's just one little detail. There's mold in the basement, right? You have to, even though you represent me, 
you have to pass that information along because uh, if, if you guys remember, it won't be the true value of the property. The, the Nurka being the buyer needs to be aware of the conditions, all right? Otherwise, there was misrepresent, misrepresentation, which we talked about yesterday, right? And um, she was not, it was not a voluntary act from Nurka, even though it seemed like so, right? Even though it seemed like so, she was unaware of her options. When you're unaware of the options, how voluntary is that? You see what I'm saying? You're kind of coerced or forced into it, right? It looks like one thing, but it's something else. All right, so um, these are the things we're gonna learn today. Employer, employee, what to do, what not to do, okay? Uh, the other thing here is fiduciary duties. So we're gonna highlight it again, but uh, fiduciary duties, Fiduciary duties are obligations to clients. Okay? Fiduciary duties are obligations to clients. Miguel says, can we suggest sell as is? You're going to sell fast but lose value. So Miguel, that's the key thing. That's the key thing. You have to advise your client on the conditions. And if the client, and look, before I move forward, there's people out there that are selling their homes. They have no money. That might be the reason they're selling their home. They can't afford the, the monthly mortgage. They know it's sellable right now. So they're just letting go. So you come up to them and say, hey, you have to fix the basement. Oh, I don't have money. What am I going to do? Just don't tell anyone, right? And you have to advise the client then, like Miguel was saying, hey, can you just tell the seller, hey, let's sell it as is. We're going to drop the price a little bit, a little bit, and we sell it as is. You can. With the, with the client's consent, that's how you're going to list it. The problem is, if, if it's as is, it's always going to sell for less. It's always a, an opening for people to offer less than, than what it is. So, Mr. Seller. Is there anyone that can help you with the money to fix the problem versus listing it as is? You see what I'm trying to say? Our job is to consult. We are real estate consultants. Our job is to find solutions for the clients. We get highly paid for these transactions. Highly paid. And there's, there's agents out there that really don't care. They show up. They show up and say, um, yeah, just, just sign here and I'll fill everything out later. And you walk out. They just want the listing. They just want the offer. They just want the contract and getting paid. You're going to get paid six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars out of a transaction. And you don't want to work for your clients? Right? You don't deserve the license. Okay? We're highly paid consultants. Not, not even psychiatrists get paid what we get paid per session. Just saying. We get paid like a thousand dollars an hour. If you, if you figure out how many hours you work on a particular deal, how long does it take from, from, a, uh, from a, uh, the moment you met the seller till the moment you closed, right? If you calculate your hours, you're probably around $1,000 an hour. Tell me a job right now that you get paid $1,000 an hour. And you don't want to work for your clients? You see what I'm trying to say? Even at two or $300 an hour. Just saying. All right, this, this subject right here, to me is, is very, very important. I was just talking to uh, one of our agents today regarding that, the things that I do, uh, attempting to bring the tools to you guys. You are my clients. Does that make sense? My duty, my obligation is to you guys. So bringing the tools, giving the advice, being there is very important. I hope this is what you bring to the field when you're helping sellers and when you're helping buyers or tenants okay, or, or landlords. So Yvette wrote, Regardless of as is, something like mold still needs to be disclosed. So, all right. So what I was going to say is, I think I mentioned yesterday, if it's something that's structural, that could damage the structure of the property, that could make it collapse, for instance, it must always be disclosed. Okay. Uh, mold is something that you can fix. So again, now we go depending on state laws, might not need to be disclosed. Right. Um, like for instance, uh, asbestos, I don't need to, um, disclose directly because mainly it's behind the walls, but if the, 
that it's hidden as an insulation. If the if the home inspector finds it, then I have to pass along that information. But I don't know about it, right? Mold is not always visible, so how can I pass a, along such information? Uh, but if it's something like a crack in the structure that will potentially make it collapse, something like that must be disclosed no matter what. All right. And again, if you selling as is, you have to disclose. Well, honesty will take you a long way. You okay? Because being sold as is, as an investor, I'm going to look at your property, right? Forget me as a realtor. As an investor, I'm going to look at your property and you tell me what you should do. I'm going to look at your property, at your client's property, and look up and down. I don't see any issues, right? I don't see the mold immediately. And here comes the big question. Why? You guys understand? Why are you selling as is? What would you tell me? As a realtor, what would you tell me? You're not my realtor. You're not my, my salesperson. You're, um, you represent the seller. I'm just a regular investor. Saw the as is as an opportunity for me. Knocked on that door, walked in. Don't see any problems. So now I need to know why as is. What would you tell me knowing that there's mold? Go ahead, let's see. Miguel, drive. <laughs> Relocating. Francelli says the truth. Okay. So, the truth. Okay. So, what would be the truth? Do you tell me that there's mold? Okay, great. So, well, Nurika, I know what you need to say. My question was, well, what would you say? If I didn't present it this way, how, if you represent the seller, so your first duty is to the seller. If I didn't present it this way that I did, all right, how, what would you tell me? All right, so these are the things I'm, I'm trying to say. Um, maybe the shave everything tested. You have to keep, you have to keep, um, your client's interest first client is the seller but because i asked what is the problem you must disclose to me and i am uh, allowed to do an inspection and yes my need to consult with the building or health department as well depending on what it is all right so you should advise the seller hey seller you don't want the lawsuit absolutely so to me give me the information allow me to inspect now here comes the second part it's listed as is, right? Now, I, as is, I found out there's mold. What do you think, me as an investor, what do you think I'm going to do? Lowball it. I'm not negotiating. I'm lowballing, and that's the final price. Cash. <laughs> You see what I'm trying to say? Something that you could fix probably for like $5,000. As an example, I'm going to deduct 30 because you could fix it, right? You could fix it. Maybe uh, it, it, it's uh, walls. Uh, you could fix by getting different estimates around, let's say 5,000. But my estimate is based on my contractor and my contractor as an investor always bumps up the number. You see what I'm trying to say? A lot of investors play this card. Hey, I did an estimate. I brought it to my contractor. The contractor said 30 grand. So you want 300? I'll give you 270. Final price cash tomorrow. I know it's only a $5,000 job. And maybe the contractor is my partner, so it's only a $1,500 job. Right? But these are the things that are going to happen. So very important. Always try to get the seller to, to uh, fix the price. Uh, I'm sorry, to fix the problem. So they don't have to re drastically reduce the price. Okay. Again, consultants. Very, very important. Now, uh, we're going to talk about agency relationship, basic roles and all that stuff.
Uh, the most primary of relationships in real estate brokerage is that between the broker and clients. The relationship known in law as the agency relationship. In every state, a body of law generally called the law of agency defines and regulates the legal roles of this relationship. The parties to the relationship are the principal or client, the agent, a broker, or the customer, third party. So very, very important. Principal, client. These mean the same. Agent is the broker, and you as a salesperson, you are a sub-agent. Okay? The customer is a third party. And these three smiley faces right here are very important. You need to understand who is the client. You need to understand who's the customer. And there's a huge difference between these. A uh, client or principal is the one who hired you. Okay, so if you want to write that somewhere, the client or principal is the one who hired you. Okay. And the customer, as it says, is a third party. So, no relationship. Okay. So, very important. The principal or the client hires the agent, the broker, to perform certain duties. The customer is a third party, so there's no relationship whatsoever. What is the difference between these two? The principal, you owe specific duties, called fiduciary duties. We'll go over that in a second, or obligations. Where the customer, you owe nothing but being fair and honest. That's all. You don't represent the customer. You represent the client, the, the, the principal. Okay? So with that being said, and before I move forward... So with that being said, if, um, if Stephanie M, like I was showing you before, if Stephanie M represents me, the seller, right, then I am the principal, I am the client, and she is the agent through the broker, an agent uh, servicing me, right? And then Nurka, she's the client of Erica, right? As we said before, so Erica represents the, the buyer. What is uh, Nurka to Stephanie M. Nothing. She's the customer. So Stephanie, you got to treat Nurka fairly and honestly. Meaning if she asks a question or if the agent asks a question, you smile, you nod, and you walk away. Why? Because your first duty is to me. I'm the one that hired you. You will not disclose stuff to Nurka that will endanger my position as a seller. Except for what we said before, things that could affect the property or the transaction. You guys understand? So telling this, the, for instance, would you tell uh, New York or the other agent, the other agent, right? Already says everything. Would you tell Erica, hey, uh, have your client bid whatever. My client will take any offer. Would you do that? Of course not. Because your first duty is to me. So if Erica submits a, a low offer, right, you still have to present it to me, but you don't have to go like, hey, listen, this is a little low, just go up a thousand. Can't do that. You have to present all offers I decide. I'm the client, I'm the one that hired your services. Are you guys understanding this? So there has to be a clear separation between who the client is and who the customer is. Client obligations we have obligations customer no obligations very very important this is where you guys fail the most there's a lot of hypothetical questions john the salesperson represents uh the seller in the transaction the buyer shows up and says hey i got more money what should you do well you don't represent the buyer 
but you should tell the buyer hey you told me you have more money my duty is to the seller therefore i'm just giving you a heads up anything you tell me i'm gonna tell the seller all right i'm gonna be fair and honest with you but i don't represent you are you guys understanding there's a lot of questions with these type of scenarios what should you do in this situation all right there's a lot of them Erica says, can I see the board? Oh, can I use the board? Oh, I couldn't see at all. Can I use the board? For what? You want me to draw it up? It's a little tough to give, give a visual on this one. So, right, and they're walking, and they see a house. You asked for it, right? <laughs> um, I don't even know how I'm going to draw this. <laughs> All right, let's see. Like John is a buyer. And I understand that. I'm just trying to figure out how to do the whole scenario that I told you guys. Right? The whole scenario. And like, okay. So here's a house. The seller. Adam Seller. Right? Be a different color now. This guy has the money. I'm playing by ear. I'm trying to figure out how how I put this into cartoonish. All right, so here's the agent. Yeah, Stephanie. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just putting the, the hair there, okay? I got really good skills at drawing, just letting you know. And... Here we have too much. Erica. Right? How bad you have your hair up? No? Okay. So Erica, realtor, and Stephanie. Realtor, and this is John Byer. Okay. Is that good or what? These are great skills, I'm telling you. All right, so the buyer, the buyer puts an offer, uh, let's say here, offer. 300,000 okay and um actually hold on let's take Erica out of the picture for a second is that okay so there's a buyer unrepresented because we said um Adam selling the house uh, with Stephanie the realtor and John the buyer brings a $300,000 offer, but tells uh, Stephanie, hey, I actually have $500,000 cash. Okay. Should, that's what I was trying to say. Should Stephanie tell the seller, hey, seller, here's an offer, but they have five hundred thousand dollars cash so like counter right 
because here there's a yep because the loyalty is here right the loyalty is here to adam yes hey adam they have more money but as an agent this is the customer you have to be fair and honest and you have to verbally verbally notify the customer right here's the client you have to verbally stephanie you have to verbally notify the buyer i appreciate you telling me that you have more money right i represent adam because i represent adam what you just told me i will tell my clients okay so again you're being fair and honest you're just letting the the, the buyer know the customer somebody you don't represent you're just letting them know i'm gonna do what's best for my clients i will treat you fair and honestly anything that i need that you need to know regarding the property condition i will let you know pretty much that's that's what it is because your first duty is to the client okay and this is true whether or not we had okay erica whether or not we had Erica there, if, if the agent makes that mistake of letting us know, right? Hey, they have more money, right? Right there. Here's the offer, 300, but there's more, okay? So if the agent makes that mistake, we should, out of professional courtesy, also treat the agent fair and honestly and say, hey, listen, uh, Erica, maybe rookie mistake, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe this is the way you're used to doing these things. I don't want to get sued. So I'm just letting you know. Anything you tell me right now about your client, I will run and tell. Okay? So very, very important, guys. Keep your client's privacy. We're going to talk about uh, cold, which is care, obedience, accounting, loyalty, and disclosure. These are the duties that you owe your client. You guys got it? Any questions? You like how I was hiding the money? With the offer be a snitch that's why you're smiling miguel i knew you were typing something there <laughs> all right This is so cool. One of our students just joined our company. All right. So um, don't ask me for these things again, Erica. Okay. I do my best, but I can't come up with stories like that on, on the fly. These have to be prepared. All right. So <clears throat> does anybody have any question regarding uh, what is a client or what is a customer? We cannot move forward until you guys understand the difference between these two, because again, it is crucial. There's like probably like 10 questions in the state exam where they put that this type of uh, uh, scenarios or role play. Okay, so make sure you understand the difference between these two. And no. Okay, customer is not the buyer. Customer is not the seller. Client is not the buyer. Client is not the seller. Let's change this based on the scenario. What if, what if the property is listed? Thank you, Fabio. I appreciate it. What if the property is listed <clears throat> for 320? Properties listed for 320. Right here, this agent or the seller tells this agent, Erica, says, Hey, Erica, uh, my client's willing to take less. Like, I, it's, it's listed for 320, but they're willing to take less. Like, all offers are go. Is that something that should be said? So we're reversing the roles. Here was Erica or the buyer telling Stephanie, hey, we got more money. 
Now it's the reverse. It's the seller telling these people right here, I'm willing to take less, right? Shouldn't now Erica tell the other party or Adam, hey, I, I appreciate that and I will tell my client, I'm just letting you know, I represent my client. So anything you tell me, the offer was uh, 300, right? But you're telling me that you're willing to go lower? Maybe we withdraw the, the offer and put it one for lower. Are you guys understanding this? In this scenario, John is the client for Erica. Okay? But is the customer the customer for Erica? Think about it this way. Adam is Stephanie's client because Adam hired Stephanie's services. John is Erica's client because John hired Erica's services. You got it? What defines a client is who hired who. What defines a customer is he was not hired by that particular party. Okay, so in this scenario, it's Erica's, the seller's Erica's customer. And it would be vice versa. Okay, so again, very, very important that you understand this. Erica in this scenario has to be fair to the seller. If it was the other way around, Stephanie must be fair to the buyer because Stephanie does not represent the buyer. Erica does not represent the seller. Okay, the representation is what makes a difference. I represent the seller. Seller is my client. I don't represent the buyer. Buyer is my customer. I represent the buyer. Buyer is my client. I don't represent the seller. Seller is my customer. Okay? So whoever you represent is the client. Whoever you represent is the client. You could even represent both. They'll both be clients. You could represent neither. They'll both be customers. All right? These are things we're going to go over. So, who's the customer? The one who did not hire you. Who's the client? The one who hired you. Very, very, very important. I cannot stress this enough. Very, very important. Hey, Brian, if you're watching on YouTube, you were never lucky enough to see my drawings. Do you see that? Now, uh, Yvette says, isn't that a conflict of interest representing both? Because of the potential conflict of interest, right? We cannot discuss prices. So we'll do the best to represent both clients as far as um, explaining the process and help making sure that they see uh, all the problems with the property or with the offer or anything like that, right? But we don't negotiate the lower price for the buyer or a higher price for the seller. We don't, we don't negotiate that, but we can represent both. Because there's a monetary interest and the potential conflict of interest, both of them must be fully aware of that representation. So uh, Adam must know that Stephanie represents John as well. So if Stephanie represents both, Adam must know and sign it, put it in writing, right? That it's okay for you to represent both sides. So this is assuming that Erica is not in the picture, All right? So if I represent both, uh, <laughs> so in this case, you represent both, so they're both the clients okay if you don't represent either they'll both be customers all with acknowledgement yep that's dual agency Verona so I'm not obligated to tell Erica that my client will take the lower offer so 
uh, Verona, what I was saying about the lower offer is um, you have to. The buyer makes an offer of three hundred thousand. You're not going to tell the buyer, "Hey, I like your three hundred thousand, but I'll take less." No. Give me your highest and best. So, if three hundred thousand, you think that's your highest and best offer? Good, I'll consider it. But I should never ever tell you other offers that I have in place. I can say that there's offers that have met the, the, the listing price or the asking price. I could tell there's offers above the asking price, but I cannot give you the actual amount. Give me your highest and, highest and best. That's how it is. All right. It's not like, hey, uh, Erica, I, I appreciate your offer. Just want to let you know if things don't work out, my, my seller is willing to take less. No, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Right. Even though people do that sometimes. Like your offer is too high. If you put cash, if you make it cash, 280 flies. Believe it or not, sometimes this happens. Okay. You have to let them know. Yeah, got that. Yvette is asking, why would any side uh, want that? Look, a lot of people don't see any harm in the representation. A lot of people don't see any harm in that. If you show yourself as a true professional and caring for your clients, a lot of people don't care. As long as the transaction goes through, they know that regardless, they have the ultimate say on the offers. So your job in the scenario is buyer puts an offer and you pass it along to the seller. Very similar to representing one side or representing the other. Right? That's it. The, diff the only difference here is I'm not telling the buyer, hey, seller is only willing to, offer to accept this much and you should take this much no i pass along the information i appreciate your offer but seller wants 310 that's the counter so we could do the counters we can go back and forth but not with my advice in terms of pricing okay our advice is these are the documentation you need this is the house uh you should do these things you should do those things you should have the home inspection you should get a pre-approval uh and so on we battle to both sides we do whatever's best for our clients, right? Again, accept the price. They decide. Okay? And for you as an agent, you get the full commission. Right? You don't have to split with Erica. You keep it all. Not bad. Oh, now I see smiles. Mm -hmm. I say full commission. You guys are like, mm, yeah, I like it. <laughs> All right. All right, before I move forward, guys, who is the client? Who is the client? Good. Good. Perfect. Awesome. Great. Amazing. On point. Who's the customer? Who's the customer? Third party. Perfect. No relationship. Amazing. Yep. Great. Keep that in mind. There's a bunch of scenario questions in the state exam like that. Okay. I want to see you guys rock that exam. All right. Now, the essence of agency relationship is trust, confidence, and mutual good faith, okay? Uh, the principal trusts the, the agent to exercise the utmost skill and care in fulfilling the authorized activity and to promote the principal's best interest. You guys got this. You already know. I think you already understood, right? So, the agent undertakes to strive in good faith to achieve the desired objective and to fulfill the fiduciary duties or obligations. In an agency relationship, so guys, I'm just skipping a few things, again, because I, I think with the whole drawing, I explained most of what's about to happen. 
Uh, yes, thank you, Erica. Before you tap yourself on the shoulders, I Anyway, in an agency relationship, a principal hires an agent as a fiduciary, right, to perform a desired service on the principal's behalf. As a fiduciary, the agent has a legal obligation to fulfill specific fiduciary duties through the term of the relationship. Look what it says here. The principal or client is who? The party who hires. The agent. Very good. The principal may, may be a seller, a buyer, a landlord, or a tenant. Very good. Agent is the fiduciary of the principal. And this word, fiduciary, means they entrusted in you with their uh, money or property. Okay? So they entrusted you with their money or property. Customer or prospect is a third party whom the agent does not represent okay so everything that we just spoke about right here highlighted i don't like the the flow of this book as much but i like the way uh they explain things in this book it's my more um easier more to the point okay Not that I like the flow of the previous book, but I guess I got used to it. But this one is, is, is a little off. What I really like about it is what I just said. Simple, straight to the point. Now, according to the level of authority delegated to the agent, there are three types of agency. Remember, before I read this, pay attention to me, before I read this, this is laws of agency. We're not talking about real estate agency. We're talking about agency in general. You being hired for a service. Okay? So, that's because this one will confuse you a little bit. Universal agent or universal agency. In the universal agency relationship, the principal empowers the agent to perform any and all actions that may be legally delegated to an agency representative. The instrument of authorization is the power of attorney, for instance. Okay, so let's talk about universal agency. Any and all powers. Okay, so I want you to write full powers next to it. Full powers. So when we're saying any and all powers or full powers, that means you represent me in everything that can be delegated. So I don't have to be there to open a bank account. I don't have to be there to sell the house. I don't have to be there to handle uh, anything, right? And this, this is very important, especially like, for instance, um, living trusts. In a living trust, if anything ever happens to you and you get into a coma or anything like that, guess what? I will represent you to the best of your interest. Even though you're in a coma, my duty is to legally represent you. This is an example. If you become mentally or physically incapacitated, I will represent you. All right, so this is not for real estate. This is for everything that can be delegated. It could be to buy a house. It could be to sell a house, buy a car, sell a car, open a bank account, close a bank account. We could do whatever we want as long as it's in the client's best interest okay so uh any parents here parents or grandparents raise your hand all right so that filled up the screen pretty much um if okay so there's two people that didn't raise their hands do you have pets okay cool now we got the full screen so ingrid i'm not comparing don't shake your head i'm not comparing kids to pets the relationship Okay, is what I'm comparing, like shaking head, like both go in the cage. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> sometimes. Uh, <laughs> so what I was saying is, if you have kids or if you have um, uh, pets, do you ask, oh, Ingrid, you're saying no pet, no kids. Okay, got it. Um, significant other? You have a significant other? No? 
Okay, so you really have no pets. Okay, so uh, orchids. <laughs> um, so what I was what I was trying to say is very simple. If you have kids or if you have pets, do you ask your pet if they want to move to another state? Did you ever? Hey, buddy, we're gonna move to another state. What do you think? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> we don't ask. We just do it. Do you do that to the kids? Like they're they're two years old, three years old, and you're like, "What you think? Let's go to California." And they're like, "Yeah, bam, bam, let's go." You don't do that. You just make that decision and go. Parents, we are universal agents of our children until they're legal adults. Does that make sense? What I'm what I'm trying to say here. Right? So we have the ultimate power of attorney, the ultimate power of attorney as a parent, right? Because we make those decisions for somebody else to the best uh, of our ability and in their best interest. That's what a universal agent will be. Uh, as parents, it's automatically, but you could also appoint somebody to do the same. So a legal guardian, for instance, right? Uh, general agency. Now, this can be more related to, to real estate as a profession, right? General agency, the principal delegates to the agent ongoing tasks and duties with a particular business, within a particular business or enterprise. Such delegation may include the authority to enter into contracts. I want you to write some powers. So universal agent has full powers. General agent has some powers. Right, as it says here, may include authority to enter into contracts. That means you don't have full powers, you only handle certain uh, tasks, certain duties. Nirika, you moved for a second, I did not see what it was. <laughs> oh, there you go, got kids. Hey, hey, <laughs> um, it's, it's an additional 150, I'll give you 50% discount. You can send it in at any time. All right. We are really bad at charging. So I'll tell you guys right now, we're awful at charging. for. Anyway. So some powers or certain powers. That means you don't have full powers. Here, you could do whatever you wanted. Here, you have a broad range of matters that you can handle, right? Certain duties, ongoing tasks, and so on. But you cannot sell the property without my permission. So a general agency could be, for instance, a property manager. See, a property manager manages the property. They have certain ongoing tasks like budgeting, maintaining the property, right? Uh, hiring and fire employees or even uh, contracting for services, right? But they cannot sell the building without the owner's authorization. They are limited uh, powers. You guys understand? And the final one, Special or limited agency. One power. Or one specific capacity. Under a special agency agreement, the principal delegates authority to conduct a specific activity after which the agency relationship terminates. In most cases, a special agent may not bind the principal to a contract. So this is key. A special agent is hired for that one specific capacity only or activity, but they cannot bind the, the, the client or the principal to a contract. So we cannot sign on behalf of. In this one, yes. In this one, maybe. In this one, no, no. We do not buy or sell anything for our clients. We help them sell, we help them buy. They make the decision. So yes, you guessed it. In most instances, real estate brokerage is based on special agency. The principal hires a licensed broker to produce a ready, willing, and able buyer or seller. When the objective is achieved, the relationship terminates although certain fiduciary duties survive the relationship. So 
Hey, Laura, I see you there. All right, cool. Uh, so what we're saying here is very simple. Remember, I hired Stephanie to help me sell, right? It's a six-month listing. If within the six months, she does not find the buyer, then the listing expires and the contract is over. You no longer represented me because it expired. If we close within the six months, right? Then congratulations, you no longer represent me. You got paid and our relationship ended, right? So the business relationship is over. Do you guys understand this? You were, um, you were working with me for that particular matter, for that specific activity to help me sell or to help me buy, whatever it is. You guys got it? Simple, right? Very simple. So that one specific capacity only. Uh, we talked about expressed and implied contracts. You guys already know express contract or in this case, written uh, listing agreement. We express what we're going to do. Implied agency is you're taking actions that imply that that's your client. So if you do certain things for your client, right, then technically, even though it's not on paper, it created the agency. The agency. So it says right here, for example, if an agent promises a buyer to do everything possible to find the property at the lowest price and the buyer accepts the proposition, there may be an implied relationship, agency relationship, even though there is no specific agreement. Did you guys understand this? So I made a promise to a buyer. The moment I made the promise and the buyer said, yeah, 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 please do it. It created an implied agency. I said I was going to. So now there's some type of liability. You guys got it? Cool. Uh, terminating an agency relationship. As I said, it could be the full performance. That means we concluded. Uh, it could be by mutual agreement. Say, hey, uh, Stephanie, it's not working out. I appreciate your services. I'm going to go with e Stefani. So different type of Stephanie altogether. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> so a mutual agreement. And it could be uh, the expiration date. We talked about that. But there's also something called involuntary termination. Uh, remember this, there might be a question in the school or state exam that involves involuntary termination. So um, it would say, for instance, which of these would cause a contract to terminate. Um, might not say voluntary or involuntary, but they will put one of these there, all right, as an, as an example. So death or incapacity of either party. Well, if one of us dies, as an example, and I'm sorry, I'll never die, so not in my examples at least, so you already know who's dying, right? Um, what happens is, if one of, one of the parties to an agreement dies, does the other party have to comply with it? No. So imagine I get into a listing with a client and the client dies. Does the spouse or the kids have to comply with the listing agreement? No, because my agreement was with you, not with your spouse, not with your heirs. So no, if it was a purchase and sale agreement, attorneys will handle that. But a listing agreement? No. So this might terminate the contract right away. A death or uh, in incapacity or incompetency of either party. Abandonment by the agent. Could Stephanie say, Bruno, you're too much. I cannot handle you. Bye. I'm not representing you anymore. Could Stephanie say that? Absolutely. I don't see why she would, but absolutely it could happen, right? Definitely. Uh, condemnation or destruction of the property. If the property is no longer there, and th this is a true story, by the way, a few years back, we had something called uh, Sandy. Does anybody remember Sandy? All right, unfortunately, right? So a few years back, a friend of mine was uh, buying a house down the shore. His closing was scheduled for that week that we had no power. So that week came, they didn't close because of the, the, the Sandy, right? And after we had access to the roads and gas and all that stuff, that, that crazy thing about the gas, right? After you had gas, he was able to drive 
um, to the property, and also after they cleared all the debris, able to drive to the property. And guess what? The property that he was trying to buy was not destroyed. Simply was not there. It wasn't destroyed. He didn't even know where it was. He just flew down the street, maybe. But a lot of properties were just uh, taken away from their uh, actual location. So if the property is not in the condition that it was originally promised, do I have to follow through with the contract? No. So in this case, because of Sandy, um, he, couldn't, um, he couldn't perform. He couldn't close. Okay? And he wouldn't. All right, what if the seller dies? And I'm sorry, Eric, I skipped yours because Malibu had started. But what if the seller dies before the closing while under contract? Okay, so this is what I was saying. This goes, uh, uh, attorneys will go back and forth with that. Because it's a sale that's under undergoing, you might still have to go through with it. It all depends. So the estate might be forced to sell, right? It's different. A listing is not a sale. A listing is not an obligation. A listing is only an obligation if you find a buyer. Do you guys remember uh, options? Yeah? Okay. So a listing is an option. It's like an option agreement. It's a unilateral contract. It's kind of like if I perform, if I do this, if I find you're ready, willing, and able buyer, then you owe me commission. Right? If there's no buyer, then there's no commission, and the seller can always back out of the listing. There might be other clauses that come with it, but the seller might always be able to uh, walk out. Uh, even if the heirs... Okay, hold on. I need to go to the chat. Not ignoring. Uh, even if the heirs want to keep the property, well, somebody has to compensate them. It's not the buyer's fault that the other party died, right? The buyer is wanting to buy the property. You're going to receive money for it. There's compensation there. There's a direct exchange. In the listing agreement, there was no exchange. There's no value given to the, to the seller, right? If the agent had... Um, had the uh, expenses, the agent might recover expenses if, if uh, somebody dies, might. In this scenario, if it was under contract, then it's, um, we already performed, we're already all, almost done, so need to take care of it, need to pay, or buy or sell, whatever the situation might be. Question from Erica. <clears throat> all the following are ways by which an offer to purchase real estate contracts. We're talking about Oh, if that could be the question? Yeah, it could. Yeah, that could be a question in the school or state exam. Go ahead and announce the questions. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Post them all. <laughs> all right. Right here. Um, coffee time. Love it. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, my man. Good Appreciate evening, everyone. it. Did I tell you guys you had, you had a closing? Another closing? Guy's on fire. Mario is the man. Take care, right. guys. Pay attention. <laughs> have you. a lot of coffee. <laughs> Pay attention. Have a lot of coffee. The solution to everything. Coffee. <laughs> Are you leaving? What is this? Like the, your Cinderella? You bring coffee, you disappear? Half a day. <laughs> Half a day. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, right. Cinderella was the... Crystal, it was not coffee, right? I always get the stories confused. All right, anyway. Um, right here. Failure to accept offer with prescribed period, revocation by offerer. Yeah, she's just posting everything. Do you want to post the rest of the questions? Like, might as well put the whole exam there. Just saying. But yes, in this, in, in this example, I got you. A, B, C, or D. Got it. In this example, the answer would have been death or insanity, which is where you're driving me right now. <laughs> and you want me to teach your husband after? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So 
You guys got it, right? These are reasons uh, for a single close. Renunciation, uh, breach of contract. We're gonna, we already talked about that where uh, the buyer could sue the seller to perform or compensation. The seller could, put, could sue the buyer to perform or compensation. Okay? Uh, or you lose your license. If you lose your license, are you getting paid? Is there any compensation? Is this contract valid? Nope. It's not. Involuntary termination of relationship may create a legal and financial liability for a party who defaults or cancels, as we were talking. So, for instance, a client may renounce an agreement, but then be held liable for the agent's expenses or commission. I already uh, said that before. Fiduciary duties. What are your duties to the client or to the customer? Right here, I have highlighted skill, care, and diligence. Skill, care, and diligence. They all come with care. If you don't care, you'll never get the skills or do your due diligence when analyzing a property. So everything comes with care. You have to care enough. <clears throat> the agent is hired to do a job and therefore is expected is expected to do it with diligence and reasonable competence. Competence is generally defined as the level of real estate marketing skills and knowledge comparable to those <clears throat> of other practitioners in the area. The notion of care extends to observing the limited scope of authority granted uh, to the agent. Okay. A conventional listing agreement. A conventional listing agreement uh, does not authorize an agent to obligate the client to contract, uh, and it does not allow the agent to conceal offers to buy, sell, or lease coming from a customer or another agent. Further, since a client relies on a broker's representation, a broker must exercise care not to offer advice outside of his or her level of expertise. Violations of this standard may expose the agent to liability for the unlicensed practice of a profession such as law engineering or accounting so with this being said right here with this being said i'm sorry your job is to not advise stuff that's outside of your expertise so are you the mortgage person? No. Are you the home inspector? No. Are you the city inspector? No. So why would you tell your clients? Happens almost every time. Why would you tell your clients? Yes, no problem. You can rent the basement. Look, extra $1,000, extra $2,000, right? This house cash flows like crazy. There's even a spot in the attic. I think we can fit a few people there. Right? Rent by the room, so you make it even an extra fifteen hundred. How can you advise things like this? First of all, is grounds for loss of license. That's the first thing. The second thing is there are professionals that will tell you no, and they will find your client, like the city inspector, shows up and sees people in the basement. Yeah, you're gonna get a red card on that on, on, on that door real quick. Do you guys understand? You don't want that. So don't advise stuff that you do not know. You should know the basics, but don't advise what you do not know. In fact, rule number one of this profession is, ready? Rule number one, point the finger. Point the finger. The attorney told me, simple. I was relying on the CPA. Or the engineer that looked at it. I was relying on the city inspector's uh, report. I was relying on the home inspector's report. The mortgage guy charged you points? Oh, we got to call him. I don't know anything about that. It's not me. It's not my profession. You want to ask me about what I do? I help you sell. I help you buy. These other professionals have their duties. All right? So there's a quick video. Hopefully we'll play here. Let's, let's see how it goes. There's a quick video I want you guys to watch. Very, very important for you to understand this. Okay? Besides penalties, which we'll talk about later. But very, very important. 
Let me see if I can get you guys to watch this. Ah, no sound. You guys have sound on your end? No? All right, hold on. That would work. Search for it. They made it what? Here. Easy. Let me tell you the next big mistake most of us make. Raise your hand, and this is what keeps us from ever getting recharged. Ever. Raise your hand if you have a problem in your life right now. Raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, you lie about other things also. We all do. I call it our monkey. And that monkey sits on your what? Back. And guess what people try to do with their monkey? They give it to us. And guess what we do? We take their monkey. It's not your monkey. Your job when you leave this class is to start practicing monkey maintenance. That's your job. I am a master at it. Because here's what will happen. People ask you this. Uh, so tell me, uh, if, if I buy this short sale, do you think that I'll get at least 20 or 30% equity? That's a great question. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's ask the appraiser that question, and then they can let you know uh, about the equity and how much equity you have in a property. Everybody raise your right hand. Go like this. Turn to the person next to you and say, it's not my monkey. Let me tell you how serious I am about the monkey. If this is all you get out of this class, it would change your life your life at least two or three times a day i'll say to myself it's not my monkey that is not my monkey i i taught a class in alaska when i checked into the hotel they gave me a sheet of paper and they said uh, mr watson uh you need to read this so i started reading it and you know what it said it, it tells you what to do what to do if you're approached by a charging bear i looked at it and i said well, why are you giving me this they said, but the way our property's set up is you're going to have to go down a trail to get to your cabin. And on that trail, a couple weeks ago, uh, someone was mauled by a bear. And this tells you what to do if you're approached by a bear. And you know what it said to do? It said if a bear charges you, make yourself look as big, as imposing as possible to a bear. A bear. And it said if the bear keeps charging, that doesn't work. Cover up all your vital organs is what you should do. Ball up and play dead. That is the best thing to do. And it said in big letters on the paper, if while playing dead, the bear starts to maul you, do not scream. I said, sir. Sir, step into my common sense corner here. I'm being mauled by a bear, and you're telling me to not scream? He said, what happens if you scream, now it becomes territorial, and the bear is probably going to have to finish you off. I looked at him, I said, this is not my monkey. This is not my monkey. This is a security issue. You need to have snipers on the trees with rifles, period. That's what needs to happen. I said, and let me tell you what's going to happen. One of your representatives is going to take me to my room. They are going in first. Once I get the all clear, then I am going in. As far as I'm concerned, this mauling is totally avoidable. Totally avoidable. So, Terry Watson, not my monkey. Um, did you guys understand? Our whole day is based on, hey, could you do this? Could you do that? Uh, do you know how to do this? Do you know how to do that? People come to you all the time. It's not that you don't know how to do certain things, but if you're not the professional, give that monkey to the, or that problem to the professional. This is what you're saying. Simple, uh, straightforward. Do not offer advice that's outside of your expertise. All right? That's why I'm always saying, some people ask me about, um, about law. Well, I know a little bit of what I went through, but I cannot give you the advice. You should consult an attorney. You understand what I'm saying? 
So these are things that, that you could do based on what I did, but I'm not sure if it applies in your case. So consult a, a, a lawyer. CPA, I got a great CPA for me. It works great for my current structure. People ask me, Bruno, you have LLC for every single property. Why? Well, for protection. My financial status or, or structure demands that I have it this way. Will it work for you? Why not? So everything has to be with the professional. You guys got it? Yes? Simple. So not my monkey. Watch that video as many times as you can. Very, very important. Share with everybody you know. Okay, when somebody asks you a question, play it for them. Hey, not my monkey. Watch this. Right? Um, and believe it or not, I have a few people that after watching this video, I've been playing this video for like three years. Uh, there's a few people after watching this video that tell me, come the next day and go like, Bruno, that thing works. I'm like, what? The not my, my monkey thing works. I feel so relieved. <laughs> just by passing along to somebody else simple if it's something you can do and it's your expertise do it it's your duty if it's something that's not up to you don't help them in a different way by leading them to the right party simple as that your life is going to be amazing as a realtor i don't know if you guys saw this violations as a realtor, not doing what I just said, it caused violations, okay? And if there's a violation, there's penalties, right? So violations of this uh, standard may expose the agent to liability for the unlicensed practice of law, of a profession such as law, engineering, or accounting. Do not do things that require a license or it will cost yours plus damages. Okay, that means that the, the, um, the judge can award punishment or punitive damages. You don't want that. Okay? Okay, as far as fiduciary duties or obligations. Okay. These are all here. Some of these mean exactly the same, but I'm going to circle the ones you need to clearly remember because everything comes with it. Care. Obedience. Accounting. Loyalty. And full disclosure. See, Loyalty comes with confidentiality. Diligence and skill come with care. All right? So what you need to remember is cold. When you represent somebody, you have to care enough to have the skills and have the due diligence or follow due diligence. Right? You have to obey lawful instructions. You have to hold proper accounting of your client's money or property. Okay? You have to be loyal and keep certain things confidential. Like, hey, my buyer has more money in the, in the bank. Don't say that. My seller is going through a divorce. They're willing to take any offer possible. Don't say that. Okay? So be loyal to who hired you. Don't be loyal to who pays you. Be loyal to who hired you. Okay? And when I say pay, I'm talking about the seller or buyer, not your broker. Be loyal to your broker. And then disclosure. You're obligated to disclose everything that could affect the transaction. All right. So cold is the acronym you need to remember as an agent when representing a client. Okay. For the customer, you have to be honest, fair, reasonable. Exercise your care, skill, and a uh, reasonable care and skill, and uh, disclose a few things. Right, very, very important. So with that, I just address this, all of it, all of it. Good. Accounting, full disclosure. Uh, 
All right, material facts. Disclosure of material facts. I want you guys to write something here. I'm on page 144. I'm not sure if yours is 142, but I'm on page 144. And I want you to write anything and everything that affects the proposed transaction must be disclosed. Okay? Material facts is pretty much anything and everything that could affect the proposed transaction. For instance, your opinion of the property's condition. I mentioned that earlier, right? If you feel like there's something with the property, you should advise your client. And that goes for the seller or the buyer, okay? Uh, information about the buyer's motivations and financial qualifications, right? You need to know if the buyer is able to buy or not. We already talked about this. You don't go to a restaurant without knowing if you can afford to eat there. Even if it's the dollar menu, you got to know you have that $1 plus tax in your pocket. Remember from yesterday? All right? Cool. Um, discussions between the agent and the buyer regarding, uh, yeah, regarding possibility of the agents representing the buyer in another transaction. Adverse material facts, including, including, let, let me highlight this for you. Including property, uh, condition, title defects, so issues with the title. It's not marketable. It's the rotten milk, remember? Okay. Environmental hazards and property uh, defects. We need to be fully aware of the conditions of uh, this property. Okay. By the way, this is one of the chapters that if, if we uh, don't finish, uh, like if I need, let me see, I just need to know where we are. But if I kind of like need to take a break now and second part is this chapter and yes, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I don't need to go to, I can use the other chapter tomorrow. This is literally one of those chapters that you have to take um, your time with it. Okay. So, uh, yep. Mr. Urban Tech. All right, guys. So, what we're going to do right now is take a quick break. All right. Very important because we're going to get into another part of um, this chapter that's very, very important. You guys uh, understand. This whole chapter is the most heavily tested chapter. Okay, if you have the Dearborn book, it's chapter three. In this book, it is uh, this chapter um, 10. Right, 11, sorry, chapter 11. All right, guys, so I'm still adjusting to, I'll get all the chapters down back, you'll see. Uh, so make sure you guys, we're gonna take a break right now. It's 714, let's get back to 725. And we start the second half of this chapter. Okay, guys? See you in a bit. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat and I'll address them. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll be right back with a new link.